Hey, how you doing, Flip Geometry? It's time for another run at this awesome thing we call triangles. Only now we're looking at triangles and inequalities at the same time. I know, two good things at once. Can we handle it? I don't know if you can. You ready? Let's jump in. Before we jump right into the theorem, let me show you some examples that will help you understand what the theorem says. So, can a triangle be constructed with the given side lengths, 9, 6, and 5? Could you build a triangle that has side lengths 9, 6, and 5? Yeah, you could. Look, there it is right there. Um, we have a longer side and two shorter sides that connect, um, and you can draw that triangle. So yes, you can. Can you draw a triangle with 9, 6, and 2? No, actually, you couldn't. You start over here, and you arc 6 centimeters away in here, and you arc 2 centimeters away, and those two arcs never run into, into each other. You can't make that triangle. Hmm. Wonder why. Let's look at one more. Um, can you make a triangle that has side lengths of 9, 5, and 4? Well, no, because when you draw a line of 9 and then you arc over at 4 and you arc over at 5, they actually run into each other right here. So you'd wind up with a straight line with a segment that's 5 and a segment that's 4 and a larger segment containing the two of them that's 9. That's not a triangle. It's a line, but it's not a triangle. So now that we've had these examples, let's jump into the theorem that we're going to be basing all of our stuff on today. The triangle inequality theorem states that the sum of the lengths of any two sides of a triangle is greater than the length of the third side. So you pick any two sides of a triangle, you add up their lengths, and you have to have a bigger number than the third side in order for it to be a triangle. If the two sides add up to a number that's smaller than the third side, then those two sides don't intersect with each other and you don't have a triangle. If those two side lengths add up to exactly the length of the third side, then you have what we saw before. You have a straight line segment with just two segments added together to make the larger segment. And that's not a triangle either. The two smaller segments added together have to be bigger than the third segment for it to be a triangle. And that gives us a test for finding out, is this a triangle if I get three measurements, or is it not? Let's look at an example here, and that will hopefully become clear to you. If I have two sides of a triangle and I want to know what are the ranges for the possible third side, I can set up three inequality statements and solve for the unknown, and I'll know how big or small my side length has to be. So if two sides of a triangle have lengths of 4.7 centimeters and 6.8 centimeters, find the range of possible lengths for the third side. So the third side has to be big enough that it plus 4.7 is bigger than 6.8. And it has to be small enough that 4.7 plus 6.8 is bigger than it. So we have to set up these inequalities here. Now, 4.7 plus 6.8 is greater than x. These two have to be greater than the third side. But the unknown third side plus 6.8 has to be greater than 4.7. And the unknown third side plus 4.7 has to be greater than 6.8. So this one right here doesn't really mean anything. Because you'll see that anything, 0, plus 6.8 is greater than 4.7. So this one we're going to see when we solve for it doesn't really help us a whole lot. But this one lets us know a small minimum, and this one lets us know the largest maximum that that third side length can be. So let's solve for x, and we'll go ahead and do it in all three of these so you can see why the second one is not very illustrative. Um, here I have 4.7 plus 6.8 is 11.5. 11.5 is greater than x. So the third side has to be less than 11.5 centimeters. Uh, this one over here, x is greater than 2.1. So the side length has to be bigger than 2.1 centimeters. So that it plus 6.8 is greater than, sorry, it plus 4.7 is greater than 6.8. Okay. Now, x greater than negative 2.1. If you solve for x here, you wind up with a statement that means that you could actually have a negative distance. Well, you can have negative displacement in physics, but in geometry, when you're measuring side lengths, negative distance is meaningless. It, it doesn't have any real value. So this kind of goes away. If you get a negative value here, then eh, you did something wrong. Don't worry about it. That's not, that's not illustrative. Look at the smallest real number, uh, positive real number that you get, and look at the, the biggest positive real number that you get and let's use those as the boundaries as the minimum and the maximum so x is less than 11.5 and greater than 2.1 and that's the range for the possible sides that could be the third side of that triangle 
One other unique thing about triangles is that if two sides of one triangle are congruent to two sides of a second triangle, and the included angle of the first is larger than the included angle of the second, then the third side of the first triangle is longer than the third side of the second triangle. There's a lot of words there, but a picture, a picture will help a lot. Basically, what we're saying is if I have the same side length, and I use this like a hinge. That's why it's called the hinge theorem. If I have a small angle, then the third side of the triangle is small. If I have a big angle, then the third side of the triangle is bigger. That's all that that's saying. Here, look, these two fingers are congruent to these two fingers. If this is the two sides of one triangle, and this is the two sides of another, and I go like this, you'll see that a small angle means that the third side is small. A big angle means that the third side is bigger, which helps you out with, not with congruency, but with similarity and with inequalities, right? You can say, oh, those two triangles have these sides congruent, but that angle is bigger, which means the third side must be bigger in this second triangle than it is in the first. Let me show you some examples of this. Because it's also involving a side and an included angle and another side, we've had side angle side congruence theorem before. Now, sometimes this is called the side angle side inequality theorem because the angle in, be in between is unequal to the angle between on another one and that lets us predict the relationship between the third sides. Another way of looking at this, the converse of the hinge theorem is sometimes called the side 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 inequality theorem because it describes the angles opposite sides of an equal length of the other two pairs of sides are congruent or if the other two pairs of sides are congruent. So again I've got hey, look, these two are congruent to these two, but the third side here is bigger than the third side here, so if it's a bigger side, it must be a bigger angle than the smaller side and the smaller angle, okay? And so that's just another way of looking at it. Um, you can look at it not as, uh, let's analyze the angle to draw conclusions about the sides. You could also analyze the sides to draw conclusions about the angles, okay? Moving on. Examples will help clarify things here. So compare the given measures then name the theorem that justifies your answer. So measure of K, N, L is what relationship to the measure of M, L, N? So we're looking at this angle versus this angle. They're alternate interior angles, but not of parallel lines, and so we can't say that they're the same. Um, we have here a trapezoid as the overall shape, and we can see that this is less than this. This is 7 and this is 5 something, so we don't have the unit. Um, but because we know that this side is congruent to this side, it's marked that way in the diagram, and we know that this line is itself reflexive property of equality, then we know that this triangle is, is very similar to and comparable to this triangle. They've got two sides that are the same lengths, but the angles have to be different, right? Because the third side of the triangle is smaller here than it, the third side of the triangle is here. So because this side is longer, this angle has to be bigger. And because this side is smaller, this angle has to be smaller. So the measure of K and L has to be less than uh, the measure of angle MLN, right? And that's because this side is greater, so this angle is greater. And this side is smaller, so this angle is smaller. And that's the converse of the hinge theorem. Right, that's going backwards through the hinge theorem. All right, um, I hope that makes sense. If it doesn't, you can watch it again and we can talk about it tomorrow. Let's do that one more time. Here I have a, a kite basic uh, figure here, and I know that this side is congruent to this side, marked that way in the diagram. And I know that this, this segment is itself, it's equal to itself, reflexive property of equality. So this angle being bigger than this angle. I then know that this side, the third side of this triangle, should be greater than the third side of this triangle. Um, so UV is greater than VW. That sounds like a, a light and an automobile. But anyway, UV is greater than VW because the included angle opposite UV is bigger than the included angle opposite VW. And that is the hinge there. Okay? Again, I hope that made sense. We can talk about some more examples tomorrow if you need them. Let's find the range of possible values for x. Here I have two similar triangles. Um, they have 
two sides congruent. This side is congruent to this side, and this side is congruent to this side, but the included angle is different. So they're not congruent triangles. This side has a measure of 100, and so 3x minus 1 is a larger, uh, it means more, it has a larger value than what's opposite the 70 degree, the 5 minus x. So you can say that 5 minus x is less than 3x minus 1, or you could say 3x minus 1 is greater than 5 minus x, and then you can solve that to find the range of values for x, right? So let's do that. 3x minus 1 is greater than 5 minus x. We're going to just do some algebra here. We're going to add uh, 1 to both sides. So 4x is greater than 6, and then we're going to divide by 4, and we're going to find that x is greater than 3 halves. 6 divided by 4 or simplified, left as a fraction. x is greater than 3 halves, okay? Um, and then we're going to also say that 5x is greater than 0 because, or 5 minus x, excuse me, is greater than 0. This is a real measurement. It's a distance, right? Distances can't be 0. And they can't be negative in this particular example. So 5 minus x is also greater than 0. So let's solve for x in this particular example. 5 is greater than x. Alrighty, so now 3 halves is less than x, and x is less than 5. I could have also written it the other way around, with the 5 greater than x, which is greater than 3 halves. But however you want to do that, that is an example of some of the stuff that you will be facing tomorrow in class. If you have any questions, we'll deal with them then, or you can put them in the comments field below, and I'll get to it as quickly as I can. Until then, God bless you, Jesus loves you, and so do I.